Hello, welcome to the 18th session of our discussions on management of field sales. I am Jayantu Chatterjee from IIT Kanpur. We are discussing in this particular session uh, a very important topic for uh, field sales management and that is uh, sales force motivation. The sales force needs a lot of inputs uh, with respect to keeping up their motivation level and uh, their enthusiasm level because as we have discussed before uh, the salespeople often face hostile environment, rejection environment, objection environment that means a whole lot of load of uh, negative inputs and remember that a salesperson is out there in the field. We are discussing about the field salespeople. So they are away from the nurturing environment of the organization. As a result, uh, they are often alone at, at distant places, um, at the site of uh, the prospective customer, and they are facing rejection, they are facing objections. So it is only with their inner motivation, with their inner strength, with their personal resilience, they can handle that kind of continuous negative inputs. So high level of motivation of a salesperson directly influences the sales presentation or the sales related conversations with the customer. And in the long run, obviously, therefore, high level of motivation is quite related to high level of uh, performance of a salesperson. So motivational inputs are extremely important. In fact, uh, there is this is a uh, interesting research output which shows that what are the key criteria uh, on which uh, the salespeople are assigned their objectives. Some of these are quantitative, like increasing the sales revenue. Some may be qualitative, like increasing the visibility. Or very importantly, the last one, if you see here, uh, building the brand. Building the brand needs a lot of creative, uh, innovative, idea-oriented um, contribution from the salesperson. And that often actually becomes uh, almost impossible unless the person is highly motivated. Only when a person is highly motivated. And you can see here that uh, between the very successful uh, salespeople versus the least successful salespeople on building the brand, the differential is very high, 31.8% to 68%. Uh, so highly motivated salesperson will be operating very well on all these different performance criteria. This uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, we have discussed uh, earlier. Here I'm, I want to uh, uh, relate Maslow's hierarchy of needs to the kind of areas where motivational inputs are required. One important point is that, as you remember in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the uh, lower two levels are physiological and safety security oriented. Physiological are, you know, like roti, kapda, makan, uh, hunger, shelter, clothing, air, and all those kinds of uh, issues. And the next level is with respect to safety and security, and that is uh, dependent on uh, the sense of safety in the job, the stability, uh, the protection from uh, their team and their uh, uh, bosses, and the need for structure, order, and so on. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that if the concern of the salesperson is dominated by the first two levels, then there is not much that you can do with motivational inputs. But if their concerns are more towards the higher three levels, particularly level three and level four, good motivational inputs, good motivational environment, good motivational supervision can play a big role. 
Uh, there is a simple test that can be done. I am providing you a brief synopsis of that test and you can use it uh, on yourself. You can also use it with your uh, team members if you are a practicing salesperson. And that is there. Are, this is a series of uh, statements or uh, a series of uh, uh, postulates. And uh, what the task is that the salesperson has to select the most important, the top 10 factors uh, with respect to uh, motivational importance to deliver uh, um, the best. So uh, a person has to select the, there are, there are a list of, uh, these are the two pages of lists. From this, the salesperson, uh, your team members, um, you yourself will have to select uh, the top 10 needs or the top 10 important uh, statements according to uh, the personal perception of the respondent. After that, after this is done and uh, the person has actually uh, can even you can even ask the respondent to put some rank order. That means the most important, the second most important, the third most important like that up to the uh, 10 important uh, statements. Then what you can do here is, as you see, all the, uh, all the statements have a number on the side, like 6, 2, 9, 8, 4, 7. What we are going to focus on are the, uh, the, the middle number like 2, 4, 3, 1, 3, 5, 3. So the middle numbers are what to focus in. And what we are going to do is then add up. So out of 10, if most of the factors are in this 1 and 2 type of middle number, then those are physiological and safety security concerns. As I mentioned, those are areas where the structural issues will have to be addressed, not so much as the motivational issues. So the organization has to look into uh, the structure, policy, uh, environment, job environment, and uh, other issues. In a well-run sales organization, we will normally see a higher number of type 3 or type 4 factors, in rare cases maybe type 5 factors. Uh, and that means that those are the areas uh, uh, relating to belonging and self-esteem where motivational inputs can be very effective and it will tell you that what kind of motivational uh, inputs are necessary for the field sales force. Uh, this is a chart which actually sort of explains uh, uh, the relationship. That means uh, if the if there are uh, belonging type of thing, you know the sales manager can create uh, structural solutions like say the president's club of salespeople who will win uh, ten million rupees worth of orders. So this is one crore club. So you uh, normally what will happen is that uh, the sales, successful salespeople in, who will be in this category, the president will uh, have uh, maybe a dinner with them, uh, with uh, the family members attending. The president will personally listen to the president. In this case, could be the vice president of sales and marketing. It could be, uh, you know, the board of directors. And, and if the salespersons are then encouraged to air their personal views about the company's direction or what needs to be done with respect to products, with respect to policies and structures and so on, that will be highly motivational because the salespeople will feel that they are part of the company's overall direction setting. They are actually, their voice is important 
and and that all those are very important motivational factors of people who are in the third level belonging level and various other kinds of recognition programs besides this one crore club uh, you know can be created where there are uh, different types of awards for different kinds of performances and those are also uh, great inputs for esteem related motivational needs so roughly speaking you can see that if the company is in type 1 type 2 level of the hierarchy of uh, needs then uh, you know really the focus of the organization should be on policies on salary on interpersonal relations and organizational environment working conditions and so on whereas uh, uh, more motivational inputs are necessary when you see that the concerns or important factors listed by um, the sales teams are uh, relating to recognition the work itself uh, the responsibility level the career advancement and so on so uh, if most of the sales people concerns are at this level uh, that, that means that actually overall it is a low satisfaction low motivation organization and if there are more and more concerns on this side that means you are actually progressing well towards high satisfaction high motivation uh, side of the uh, sales force uh, uh, make up uh, and sales force uh, approach sales force motivation in the exploration stage uh, in the exploration stage of setting a motivational program first is actually you know focus on learning uh, learning the skills required to do the sales job well side by side the manager's role is to reinforce accomplishments uh, spend time with the sales person uh, discussing about the knowledge side of the uh, sales process and uh, also discuss the long term impacts uh, good sales performance has on the organization and link therefore the sales person's contribution to the organizational well being later on you focus more on the in the in the uh, at the first stage this is a more an exploratory situation but in the later stage where you actually uh, focus through your motivational inputs also on the skills uh, to produce higher level of results and uh, how you can actually increase the self starter uh, type of profile of the sales person uh, how to make them more autonomous um, so more self engine driven and here actually uh, the manager's role is to reward uh, high achievement which is coming from autonomous uh, independent initiative and uh, uh, in short the whole purpose of this motivational uh, process is to highlight uh, the paradigm of success beyond just salary increase or promotion so this uh, internal uh, level of uh, self motivation and uh, creation of more autonomous uh, self driven Uh, sales person psychology is what we need to create through the uh, motivational process motivation management uh, what we call in this session and of course uh, uh, first is exploration then is uh, what we discussed about uh, establishment and then this maintenance and uh, so here actually we look at the broader view of uh, work and organization and involve the sales persons in that um, and the other thing is the management here can create uh, different kinds of challenges uh, because the sales persons are kind of people who are highly motivated by uh, challenges they are like sportsmen uh, or sports uh, women uh, so that means they are actually continuously uh, trying to do better uh, than what they themselves did before 
and uh, this is this is really the sign of uh, good high level uh, sports performance and similar a uh, challenge setting is an important role of the manager and of course uh, if challenges are achieved then there should be significant rewards and significance here again i want to highlight is not only uh, it is important that there is a monetary reward uh, it is important that there are some positional reward but it should not end there it should actually uh, visible uh, belonging and esteem needs uh, should be addressed in the reward structure so uh, compensation job title uh, usage of company car and other facilities company phone and other perquisites are uh, quite important also in many organizations uh, they are practicing this thing that they have field sales council where maybe you know the top sales people will be meeting with the uh, board of directors the top sales people will be meeting with a council of the top managers uh, and there uh, it, it it patient hearing has to be given to the sales people's uh, uh, perceptions and uh, important uh, contributions should be rewarded and important contributions should be visibly implemented and these create a very high level of motivation and uh, of course a company a journal or company website uh, highlighting uh, success of individual sales people and that kind of success could be different it could be by way of uh, uh, sales uh, numbers achievement and there are various other kinds of qualitative sites uh, we can look at so this is a slide which shows uh, the, this uh, concept of boundary spanning boundary spanning means that just like in a football field the center forward is supposed to score goals right uh, but in a good football team if required the uh, forward center forward or other forward members may often actually take some defensive role they may actually go up and down the field playing a uh, different responding to different kinds of needs in the same way in the uh, in a motivated sales uh, team they are easily handling sometimes uh, roles expected out of say customer service people or roles uh, played by sometimes the top management because they are alone in front of the customer and if required they should say okay i can take this decision and the organization should create uh, processes and structures wherein under special circumstances the sales person out there in the field uh, should be able should be uh, enabled empowered to take a decision which normally would be taken by the sales manager or somebody even higher uh of course uh, this this facility is to be given to such people who are high performance uh, high performers people who are uh, highly motivated and people who have been found to have good common sense and there you can actually uh, uh, delegate that kind of empowerment and that uh, definitely uh, improves the boundary spanning so the ball doesn't drop and uh, therefore the customer gets a seamless feeling i have seen that many good sales people often call on the customer even after the sale even though at that is the time when the uh, order might be under execution uh, really speaking it has no relationship with immediate order booking yet good sales persons go and spend that time because they are wanting to be boundary, boundary spanning they want to uh give the customer the feeling that the sales person is a single point contact to respond to customer's need as well as uh, problems if any later stage so this particular slide you should uh, read it in uh, more detail uh, after downloading it to sh to tell you that uh, these are the different types of sales functions 
uh, and like uh, working with orders, product servicing, uh, managing information, servicing the account, all of these uh, to highlight two things. Uh, we also have the activities related to each type of function that is described on the left hand side column. And uh, I'm trying to highlight it through this slide two things. One is that when we talk about uh, boundary spanning, then uh, even though a salesperson is supposed to be confined to this particular set of activities, actually, if required, uh, the salesperson in a boundary spanning, spanning mode may have to do uh, these functions as well. For example, product servicing, learning about the product, how it is tested, what are the quality issues, so that the salesperson in a good, uh, particularly in a high tech industrial selling, uh, the salesperson, if can train the customer, uh, supervise repairs, uh, in an emergency situation can actually guide the maintenance people uh, in the client's organization. It goes a, uh, goes a uh, quite a bit towards establishing the salesperson's personal credibility and thereby raising the motivational level of the salesperson. So understanding the different uh, uh, activities with respect to different dimensions of the job and empowering the salesperson, training the salesperson, giving them necessary skills to go across their uh, traditional job boundary, job description will actually be uh, beneficial in two ways. A, it will raise the motivational level of the salesperson by making the person more knowledgeable by making the job multidimensional, as well as it will give a higher level of satisfaction to the customer if done well. That means the customer feels very uh, respectful of the salesperson and that creates the new generation uh, of salesperson which we have discussed right in the beginning that this is the age of consultative selling. This is the age where uh, the uh, salesperson must be respected and not considered as a con man. So uh, to implement that, this uh, versatility, this multidimensionality in the job performance is uh, very important. And now I'll conclude with uh, some aspects of uh, self-motivation and motivation directed uh, self-monitoring. Uh, this is something I discussed right in the first week of sessions that ultimately for good sales performance, the salesperson must be well managed within, well managed within. And this self-management uh, can be uh, actually implemented by one of the important techniques and very useful techniques, which we call a self-contract where the self uh, salesperson can enter into a contract with himself or herself, a very private uh, level understanding where the person will be impartially assessing uh, his or her own performance and out of that uh, create a, a, a contract, uh, something which may look something like that, this that on a particular date, uh, this is the goal and this is the agreement that I agree to call on at least three prospective customers each week throughout the year. In my call report, I will note each new contract made at the end of the week, this information will be transferred to a chart posted on my office door. So this is a, a very simple uh, commitment to oneself and uh, this kind of agreement and its execution actually can uh, create very positive consequences which are listed here uh, and I request you to read them in detail that if the contract is kept, if the contract is broken and kind of a bonus clause. So you see this is all self-managed. So you reward yourself uh, through this bonus clause that if I exceed 
the goal of increasing the number of accounts by 10% before the year is out, I will reward myself with a weekend trip uh, to a, here it is Las Vegas taken from an American example, but it could be a trip to Goa or um, uh, anything uh, that will be interesting. Then comes uh, concluding two or three slides uh, on quotas and their role in uh, motivation. Now quotas are kind of targets, uh, another name of targets. And it has been found through a number of research people uh, and uh, various kinds of long-term research projects that monetary rewards play a res lesser role in motivating a salesperson uh, compared to achievement of uh, quotas. That means if targets are met or targets are exceeded, the salesperson really feels a high and that is a kind of self-motivation which uh, has uh, invaluable uh, long-term impact. And uh, this kind of quotas or target setting can be done very skillfully by a sales manager because the quotas can be obviously sales volume related. That means how many rupees worth of orders or how many number of units sold, uh, how many machines are installed and so on. So these are quantitative volume related. It could be profit based. This is a higher order of uh, requirement. That means a person, a salesperson has to understand uh, cost, volume, uh, profit relationships and should understand that how their performance in a particular territory goes towards the final organizational performance. So uh, if a salesperson is able to uh, understand profit impact of their actions, it means that that organization has done well with respect to empowering and making their salespeople knowledgeable. And of course, sometimes the uh, targets or quotas should be set with respect to certain activities. That is, for example, the number of units sold of a new product or, uh, uh, you know, the uh, true reporting of uh, sales call uh, facts or uh, that means, uh, you know, the issue of quality as opposed to just simple uh, quantity type of thing. And uh, as I was mentioning that it has been found through number of experiments and uh, research projects that salespeople are uh, more of quota achievers and not money maximizers. And so, uh, Therefore, the quota setting is a skill that a sales manager, a field sales manager has to develop. Because if it is too low, uh, then actually motivation declines because the salesperson knows, oh, I can easily uh, meet that quota. And if the quota is uh, very high, then uh, it can actually lead to frustration. The salesperson can feel, oh, I can never achieve that. And that, that itself actually will make it a self fulfilling prophecy by not uh, meeting it. So setting the quota uh, uh, at a challenging level, that means not too easy, not too hard, not too uh, ambitious, uh, yet it is not too, uh, you know, lowbrow. Uh, setting it at a uh, optimum level uh, can be done skillfully by the sales manager depending on the overall organizational strategic imperatives at that particular point. And also, uh, it, uh, the quota setting should not be thought of uh, uh, without relating to overall organizational needs, organizational uh, environment. Uh, as I mentioned right in the beginning of this session, that if the concerns are too much related to um, physiological and security, then that a higher order target setting is uh, creates a very, very uh, harsh uh, task oriented environment and ultimately it is detrimental. It, it may work 
in the short term for a little while, but in the long term that organization will fail. So with that, I uh, conclude this important session on sales force motivation. And uh, there are a number of other uh, references given in your textbook. And so I request uh, all of you to read uh, in conjunction with today's session, uh, the chapters, relevant chapters in the uh, textbooks. Any one of the books will have some discussion on uh, sales force motivation. And if you have any further question, please do post them on the forum. Thank you.